And then it was a major life changer for me once I got to the point where I could do that on a regular basis. And that's what we've learned. Let's talk about money. No, I don't mean let's talk about investing and budgeting and all of that kind of thing. I would love to talk more about the psychological aspects. I'm not an expert in any way. All I can tell you about is my experience. And having retired at 52, I've had to think a lot and change a lot about how I relate to money and my relationship with money, honestly. So let's chat about that. For context, I came from a background where, at least when we started out, we, meaning me and my parents, didn't have a lot of money, but had a lot of possibilities. And so I remember what it was like to have very, very basic meals, you know, tuna casserole, (laughs) TV dinners, that kind of thing. I am Gen X after all. So anyway, so relatively humble beginnings but then moved relatively quickly, excuse me, into a more, you know, middle class environment. We moved into uh, Cupertino, Silicon Valley in the late 70s, early 80s. And financially, my family has done, we're not like super rich, but has done pretty well. But I remember what it was like to drive the old beat up cars that would break down in a moment's notice. I mean, that's my first several cars were things that could fall apart at any time. And so when I think about how that affects my relationship with money, um, the first real uh, the first real memory I have around thinking about money and how it made me feel was when uh, my husband and I got married and had a baby very quickly. And, um, and I remember having to go to the grocery store and think, okay, I've got, you know, $50 in my wallet. That's how much money I can spend. And as you add things to the grocery cart, having to add them up in your head to make sure you didn't overspend that $50 and have to go through the embarrassment of putting things back. And, and I just remember you know, all the hard decisions that you had to make and that kind of thing. And I thought to myself, when I get to the point where I can just go grocery shopping and not even have to think about how much money I'm spending, that's when I will have really made it. And, and that was less about the economics of it and more about the feeling that it, that it gave me. And I absolutely was able to do that. And I would say most of my adult life, being the mother of two children and, and having a husband and dogs and the whole thing, most of that time, I didn't have to think about what was going into my grocery cart and how much I was spending. And that felt really good. And I was able to make sacrifices in other areas of my life, but that was something I absolutely did not want to have to sacrifice. I wanted to be able to just go in and buy the food that my family needed and wanted. And that was success. That was absolutely success. Now, I then spent my whole career climbing the corporate ladder, making more and more money. My husband went from the tech industry to um, to being a real estate agent and we did we did really we did really well again we weren't super rich we lived in a 1700 square foot house it wasn't like this you know big McMansion or whatever but we lived very very comfortably we went out to eat whenever we wanted we took um, you know some really nice vacations here and there so we did well but we were really caught up in that culture of, you know, keeping up with the Joneses and buying the nicer cars and, and taking the nice vacations and wearing the nice clothes and having a nice handbag and all of that kind of stuff. And it felt great. And I felt like, you know what, damn it, I earned this. I work really hard for this money. I deserve all of this stuff. And I'm not arguing with that. I did. I did deserve it. We deserved it. But my relationship with money then became about, I deserve all of this. I'm working hard, I'm gonna spend the money. We could have saved so much more money (laughs) along the way and just didn't. We're horrible savers. So fast forward, 
into our 50s and we made the decision for many reasons to retire at 52. And our relationship with money had to change really fast at that point. We could have stayed working another however many years and not had to make those changes. But that was the decision that we made. It wasn't worth it for us at that point to continue with the stress and to spend our the best years of our lives working so hard. So we retired. But that meant that we had to do all kinds of things. I'm not going to go into all the details of those finances. But what it has really highlighted for us is our spending habits. And you hear a lot of people talk about retirement in terms of um, saving enough money so that they can retire. And usually what people mean, in my experience, is to save enough money so that they can retire and continue to live the same lifestyle um, with the same comforts that they have on the day that they retire. And we approached it very differently in saying, you know what, we're gonna have to change all of that. We're gonna have to change our comfort level, change our location, change how we live, change the choices that we're making in order to make the decision to retire early. And it was totally worth it. We absolutely made the right decision for us, wanted to do that, but it really then highlighted my relationship with money. And I remember as I was working, I would see something really pretty. I don't know, you know, a pair of earrings or a pretty little bowl or something. And I would think to myself, oh, that is just, that's beautiful. Oh, that's amazing. I deserve that. I should have that. So I would buy it. And what I, I can't do that anymore. And so what I've had to really do is to retrain myself to see something. Let me back up a little bit. The other part of that is accumulating things. And we had accumulated 25 plus years of things in our home <laughs> before we left it. And as we were going through all of that stuff, really began to realize how much stuff we had that we just, we never even, we never used, we didn't touch, it was you know stuffed up in a cupboard somewhere. And, and when we, and because of the lifestyle that we were choosing to live, which was relatively nomadic for three, four years, we couldn't have a lot of stuff. We had nowhere to put it. We didn't have a home. We were changing where we lived about every three months or so. And so, so we had to get rid of a lot of our stuff. And when we got rid of it, what we realized was, oh, that feels really good. We really feel lighter. We feel so much lightness. We don't have all this stuff. We didn't need any of that stuff. What were we thinking? And so, and so now I'll get back to my original point. When I see something at a store or online or wherever, and it's really cool, it's really beautiful, it's fun, it's whatever it is, I look at it and, I, and I've retrained myself to be able to say, that's really cool, that's gorgeous, wow, this artist really did a nice job with this thing, or whatever it is. And I can admire it for what it is and set it down. I don't have to possess it. I don't have to have it in my life. I can admire it and thank it for letting me see it and then put it down and walk away from it and not have to buy it. And that seems so simple. It seems like such a little thing, but it was a major, it took, it took, took time for me to figure that out. And then it was a major life changer for me once I got to the point where I could do that on a regular basis. Now, I still buy things. I still see things and, and think, oh, I really want that or I really need it. I tend to think long and hard about it. I try not to do impulsive buys. Every once in a while, I'll treat myself to something. I do, but I also shop differently. This was a thrift store buy, and it's one of my very favorite shirts. I just love this shirt, and it cost me like $5. Being able to make those kinds of shifts really fits better into our lifestyle and also 
makes me feel better about the choices I'm making with money. And whenever I kind of feel, start to feel a little down about it or, you know, really envious or wanting something, I think to myself, do I want to have this thing, whatever it is, so badly that I'd be willing to go back to work full time to do it? Every single time, the answer has been no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make that sacrifice. So sometimes it's a matter of just being really clear about what your priorities are and what you really want out of life. And that can help you make all kinds of decisions that or choices that would have been really hard before. So... So if you find yourself thinking about, man, I wish I could retire sooner, or man, I wish, you know, when I do retire that I'm going to be able to, to have more money at that point, but I have to make different decisions along the way. And how do I think about money? Really, my whole point is really examine your relationship with money because it's not just logistical. And it's easy for me to say that because I have money. It's easy to say money's not important when you have it, when you don't have it, when you don't have enough of it to live well or to live on a day-to-day -day basis. It's absolutely important. So I'm, I don't mean to demean that at all. But what I'm saying is, is that when you get to the point where you have to start, when, when you need to start making choices about how you spend your money, and how you make your money and how both of those affect your lifestyle, really dig into the emotions that come up for you when you think about that, when you think about the choices you're gonna have to make. Because make, ultimately making those choices will be, making better choices will be easier for you if you understand the emotions behind it. And let's face it, most of us don't like talking about money. We don't. It's just, I, well, from my experience, from for me personally, it just feels gross. I don't like talking about it. But it's become really important for me to not only talk about it and plan for it and budget and save and all of that, but it's also become really important for me to understand my relationship with money and why I got to where I was in terms of my spending habits and my expectations for life. So once I understood that my feelings about money came from a time in my life when money was really, really tight and I had to really worry about it, and then coming out of that and how good it felt and how it really changed my habits and, and just understanding that dynamic helped me be able to then on the other side of it, really let go of that to understand that money doesn't buy happiness. Money buys you security and it buys you choices. And the choice that I made and that my husband and I both made together was to not have to have things the way that we used to think we had to have things. Instead, our money buys us time. And for us, time and the flexibility to spend our time the way we want to spend it is happiness. And that's what we've learned. Thanks for hearing me out and for sticking around. If you're still here, I would love for you to do all the things. And I hope to see you again soon.